Let us start this lecture with a thought process from Barry Commoner, who says the environmental pollution is an incurable disease. It can only be prevented because the magnitude of environmental pollution is so high is that it is really difficult to cure this disease. And uh, let us recall that what we learned in the last lecture, we basically looked at uh, how does the combustion system uh, produce the pollutants which will be affecting the atmosphere adversely. In the process, we learned that uh, the pollutants like your SOx, NOx, COx, unmanned hydrocarbons and also the, some of the uh, radicals and particulates are basically emitted from the uh, combustion systems. And we are using uh, the various uh, combustion systems for development of industries and also uh, for our transportations and other uh, facilities. And their uses are increasing at an alarming rate as a result that we are polluting the atmosphere. And we have also seen uh, that uh, the how does this chemical pollutants affecting the atmosphere and uh, causing also health hazard. So, we will today look at uh, basically discuss more about the chemicals from the combustion sources. The emission of CO and CO2 and uh, oxygens and it has been observed that there is a imbalance of carbon oxygen cycle in the atmosphere because the nature works in a cyclic manner that we must keep in mind. Because mother nature works of its own way, we should not hamper or tamper the cycle which is going on. So, therefore, uh, our effort must be that we will minimize the uses of combustion system for the sustaining life on this beautiful earth. At the same time, we will have to work hard for uh, developing our systems, combustion systems as that the emissions or the chemical emissions from the combustion system can be minimized. Let us look at like carbon monoxide is released directly into at atmosphere by incomplete combustion that we already know. And uh, this is the carbon monoxide basically is the primary consumer of OH. OH is a radical and it reacts uh, with any molecules and it is a uh, being there in the atmosphere from various sources and which act as a cleansing agent of the atmosphere. But however, uh, the uh, amount of OH oxidant in the atmosphere is limited. Now, if you produce more amount of carbon monoxide, then that is basically consumed by the uh, carbon monoxide itself. But however, the nature makes uh, some of the um, methane due to the fermentation or biomass which are uh, there in the nature. So, that produces atmospheric methane and other hydrocarbons and OH was is basically supposed to react with the methane or other unburnt hydrocarbons to produce the carbon dioxide. So, that atmosphere can be uh, cleaned, cleansed and that can uh, lead to the reduction in global warming. Uh, right? So, therefore, uh, if you produce the car more amount of carbon monoxide, then it will cause an imbalance in the nature. About 40 percent of carbon monoxide in atmosphere is contributed by the burning of fossil and then other fuels like a biomass, but of course, the 60 percent are uh, produced by the uh, by the other uh, activities of the nature. And more CO in the northern hemisphere is uh, uh, being measured, 
which is due to excess burning of fossil fuels in the northern region because of uh, the activities are more human activity. Is the major portion of carbon produced from the combustion? Certainly no, as already I have told that uh, 40 percent of carbon monoxide in the atmosphere caused due to the combustion system and uh, rather the more amount of carbon monoxide are formed from the oxidation of methane generated by the anaerobic bacteria in swamps and paddy fields uh, during the decomposition of this uh, biomass. And, uh, <coughs> and as a result, these uh, you know there is a great concern for climate change that we could uh, observe uh, in our uh, today. And question is why there is a climate change, which is a great concern for worldwide how to contain it. And uh, we will be discussing some of the regions, but however, the uh, regions given here need not to be complete in respect, but uh, these are all various. Uh, uh, kind of ideas people put forwarded by researcher. Climate change is caused due to the change in carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere and uh, of course, with the industrialization uh, across the globe, the deforestation is a global phenomenon. Of course, in India it is a very blatant and uh, abusive in nature due to the increased population and also the people became inhuman to the uh, due to the market driven uh, metallism uh, philosophy being adopted by the people as the market driven metallism makes a man maniac. So, uh, although our scripture says that you should take care of forest, forest land should be more because nature works from the forest, sea, from the river. Deforestation in recent days is the main cause of accumulation of carbon dioxide in the biosphere because more of the trees will be there. So, that uh, that can absorb the carbon dioxide and it is because it will act as a sink for the carbon dioxide and there is a cycle which really being maintained by the nature will not be affected by the man made uh, interference in the work of nature. And changes in the land used by human being contribute a carbon dioxide increase in atmosphere because the people become land grabber and they want to really use the land for their purposes only leaving aside the other uh, living beings. Uh, to uh, be Paris. The global carbon cycle involves exchange of atmosphere carbon dioxide with carbon reserve in ocean and biosphere in several time scales which uh, we have not really understood uh, fully. And then uh, also the effort must be made to maintain that uh, global carbon cycle uh, which is taken care by the mother nature. So, it has been predicted that the freezing of current emission uh, even it is not possible to do that really uh, would not really solve our problem immediately. But of course, uh, if you look at politically it is not really possible to uh, bring the current emission level to 0 level because of activity so much that you cannot really do, it is impossible to do. But even if you do under ideal condition, it would not really solve the problem of uh, uh, environmental pollution immediately because it has gone beyond repair. And however, we will have to reduce to it so that it can at least uh, lead to the, uh, can, uh, the catastrophic uh, termination of the life on this earth may be avoided carbon dioxide emission does not impact the atmospheric chemistry directly, but changes the temperature circulation which indirectly changes the chemistry of atmosphere. So, also the climate leading to the climate change. So, these are the reasons what I have given of course, the this is a hot topic which is being researched 
by large number of people across the globe and it is um, uh, cannot be really discussed in. But I just to give a overall view, I have just mentioned some of the thing which is related to the uh, combustion generated pollutants. There is a great concern for global atmospheric concentration of carbon monoxide which I have shown here. These are uh, carbon monoxide ppm by volume, right. ppm is basically parts per million. Uh, if you look at uh, 1750 uh, CE, that is uh, CE, right, common era, uh, that uh, label was around maybe 275, it remains almost constant, of course, increasing, uh, increasing little at a slow slope. Then, but around 1950 or onwards, it started increasing at a faster rate. And uh, these are all uh, predicted, the red color is predicted emission and this uh, kind of uh, black one is basically the actual carbon dioxide data uh, from the atmosphere. And if you look at it is really going well according to prediction. And, um, and if you look at the data, it is really very alarming and uh, people say that if it will go beyond the 450, that means maybe there will be catastrophic extinction of the life on this beautiful earth. So, if you look at it is increasing. Now, today in 2018, that is this data is May 29, right, it is 411.8 ppm, something around here, right. And this correspond to around 3200 gigatons of carbon dioxide containing approximately 870 gigatons of carbon being there in the atmosphere what people have calculated which is a quite a huge number. And uh, of course, you may say this is the ppm level, but uh, still if you look at amount of carbon present in the or carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere is quite huge in number and it may lead to a, a very catastrophic extinction of life on this beautiful earth. Of course, there is a lot of theories are there, one has to look at. Uh, now, let us look at emission of uh, NO nitris, nitrous oxide, nitric oxide and uh, from this. So, if you look at uh, these are the main components of producing O3 in the tropospheres. Ozone layer protects us from the wrath of the um, UV uh, rays coming from the sun and uh, so we will have to really protect this uh, ozone layer such that we can have a uh, good life in this beautiful earth. The life of these gases are quite short even less than one day, but however, it is uh, quite reactive and combustion of fossil fuel is the largest source of the NOx emission in the atmosphere. The emission quantities by the combustion sources are sufficient enough to affect the quality of atmospheric air. And therefore, we should be concerned about it and we will have to find out how to reduce it. Combustion of fossil fuel is the largest source of NOx around 22 megatons per year and this number may be little ballpark number and uh, this might have increased today and uh, this is a little old number and stationary source of contributor is around something 13 megaton per year and NOx emission by biomass is quite small that is why people are proposing to use the uh, basically biomass mixed with the coal and other solid fuels so that it, they can reduce the NOx emission from the uh, solid fuel combustion system. The, what people have observed that there is a four fold increase in tropospheric NOx uh, level and uh, that is caused due to the combustion. So, uh, I am giving you some numbers which is about the NO uh, emissions from various sources like if you look at the motor vehicle is the largest one, uh, 78 million tons per year and which amounts to 17.53 percent about all 
total combustion sources. Combustion sources is the 21.7 million tons per year. The next is of course, the coal which is uh, little higher uh, and agriculture burning are also uh, not really very much and total amount is something 44. And emissions of hydrocarbons is uh, another important one and which is basically due to the unburnt hydrocarbon other also sometimes the fuel are being let out due to the malfunctioning of the fuel systems. So, uh, there is a two one is the of course, the methane hydrocarbons other is the non methane hydrocarbons which are uh, which are having a short lived and highly reactive in nature. So, oxidation of these hydrocarbons leads to the formation of ozone layer and uh, ozone particularly in the uh, on the near the ground level and that causes a lot of uh, problem for to the people. And volatile organic compounds that include the NMSC that is non-methane hydrocarbons as well as oxygenate species such as aldehydes and alcohols, uh, which is also causes a, a lot of problems. And uh, these are uh, the aldehyde and alcohols are basically mainly contributed by gasoline vehicles sol due to the uh, solvent evaporation and mass biomass burning. Because of these are causing and this uh, really uh, causes a lot of problems in the atmosphere. And uh, these bio organic hydrocarbons are quite reactive in nature are usually destroyed within the boundary layer of atmosphere but however, it causes the disease and other problems health problems. And emission of sulphur dioxide and sulphate aerosols which are great concern for the people due to. And sulphur content of fuel such as coal and oil is in the range of 0 0.5 to 2.5 by mass. Uh, fortunately, Indian coal, coal does not contain uh, uh, sulphur. But however, the Chinese coal uh, contains large amount of sulphur and they are using for the power plant. Therefore, uh, they are emitting large amount of uh, SOx to the atmosphere. Uh, some uh, research or study says that uh, the India will be affected adversely because of transport of uh, SOx from the China to India due to the global current that is prevailing due to the climate. And sulphur in the fossil fuel is usually emitted as SO2 and leads to the formation of sulphuric acid. And this sulphuric acid affects the structures and building also skin uh, uh, diseases and some problem comes to the thing due to this sulphuric acid. SO2 takes a very less time to get conveyed sulphate to wet or dry deposition on the earth surface that is a good part of it and combustion of fossil fuels contributes significant amount of sulphur dioxide in troposphere which is about 80 megaton per year what people have estimated. And uh, so, if you look at the source of sulphur dioxide fossil fuel is basically 80 uh, megatons per year and metal smelting you can get also 8 million tons per year of course, bias mass burning causes uh, 2 million tons per year across the globe. And beside this like oil, vegetables or uh, vegetations and even ocean to some extent that gives around uh, 25 million tons per year. So, uh, therefore, uh, if you look at the combustion is really causing a major source of the uh, SOx emission in the atmosphere. So, therefore, that is a great concern uh, which need to be uh, abated. Now, we will be looking at how to quantify the emission level. Uh, because emission levels are reported in several different ways while dealing with different devices. Uh, for example, we are using the automobile engines and we are also uh, let us say using the furnaces in uh, process industries. And similarly, we are having power plants, we are producing energy and also emitting. 
different people uh, report the emission level in different ways. For example, gas turbine engine uh, people put uh, express the emission level as ppm, ppm means parts per million by volume uh, at 15 percent oxygen level, because oxygen level also will be different, so the ppm will be different. And this is the standard way by which the gas turbine combustor people will be coating or measuring and expressing in terms of ppm by volume at 15 percent of oxygen. But however, the furnace uh, in uh, people uh, will be coating the in terms of ppm level at 3 percent of oxygen. Uh, and uh, nowadays of course, the gas turbine combustors uh, and other places also people are going for emission index which is independent of this oxygen level. In, in auto engines basically uh, that is being expressed, the emission level is being expressed in terms of gram per kilometer and uh, but uh, in case of boiler or the power plant, uh, the emission level is expressed in gram per kilowatt or gram per uh, megawatt power level. So, species emission and its corrected value is very important because if you are uh, reporting in certain values, then you will have to also report in different value. Beside this, in the combustion, uh, there will be also the water will be uh, there in the exhaust gas. If water can be re removed before the combustion, before you are taking the measurements of emission, then of course, that is known as dry. As I told that. Uh, on if it is generally the combustion system is characterized in terms of emission level. And uh, of course, the confusion prevails due to the change in sampling condition uh, due to the two reason. One is degree of dilution as I told like a dilution particularly the oxygen level and uh, the dry or wet condition as I told earlier that in case of the uh, burning of hydrocarbon fuels, there will be a water formations and uh, therefore, water uh, will be there in the gaseous phase in the product itself or, or in the flue gas. So, when you consider the uh, emission measurements without really removing the water content, then we call it as a wet condition and when you uh, remove the water content uh, and then measure the emission level, we call it as a dry condition. As I told earlier that if the moisture is removed from the exhaust sample, then it is yield a dry concentration. And uh, if some certain situation it may not be possible to remove moisture, then it is known as wet concentration. Uh, now, we look at the species emission and how to express it such that it can be also corrected for particular values. For this purpose, let us consider for this purpose, let us uh, consider a hydrocarbon fuel air mixture at lean or stoichiometric condition. And uh, of course, you cannot apply this thing whatever we will be doing for the reach condition uh, that is not a part of this course uh, because it is quite complex. Let us consider uh, a hydrocarbon fuel and represented by C x H 2 y is a reacting with A molecules of air and uh, says that the C x moles of CO 2 is being formed and y moles of water and b moles of oxygen 3.76 into a uh, moles of N 2. Of course, there will be several trace spaces. And uh, if you look at like we are interested to basically find out the mole fraction of particular species in the product. Uh, that is I s species. Keep in mind that we can consider the mix, uh, uh, 
uh, weight mix, weight product or we can consider the species when the water or the moisture is there right then we call it as a weight mixture and if the moisture is being removed from the product gas or the flue gas and then we measure the constituent like CO or CO2, O2 any other species then we call it as a dry. Let us now look at this weight mole fraction of I s species uh, that can be defined as x i of weight mixture is equal to n i or n i basically number of of moles of i th species and divide by n mixture of weight that means under what condition what will be. So, then if you look at uh, on the uh, denominator that will be x plus y and b is for oxygen and of course, y is for water and 3.76 a. Similarly, we can also uh, uh, express the dry mole fraction of I s species as x i dry uh, which is equal to n i divided by n i mixture dry and uh, this is n i divided by x plus b plus 3.76 a. In case of dry uh, mixture the basically y would not be there because water is not there and that is the difference uh, between the weight mixture fraction of I s species and dry mixture fraction of I s species. Carrying out a balance uh, for O atom, we will get basically uh, if you look at 2 a is equal to 2 x plus y plus 2 b. Then a I can write down as this. So, uh, ratio of total number of moles in the wet mixture to dry mixture if I take this as a equation 1 and this is as a equation 2 then I can get basically as uh, n i mixture wet divided by n mixture dry is equal to basically x of i dry x i weight and that is equal to x plus y divided by 2 plus b plus 3.76 a keep in mind that we are basically taking this equation uh, 1 which is the in the case of basically uh, in the numerator and then that is equal to uh, that is divided by x plus b plus 3.76 a which is equal to 1 plus y divided by x plus b plus 3.76 a. From this equation I can write down x plus b is equal to a minus y by 2 and if I can write down on the left hand side x plus b plus 3.76 a is equal to a minus y by 2 plus 3.76 a is equal to basically 4.76 a minus y by 2. So, similarly I can write down is equal to 1 plus y 4.76 a minus y by 2. So, uh, now with this we can get basically the a values 
which is uh, easily we can get uh, these values. And but before doing that, let us now look at by using equation one, we can have the mole fraction for O2 that is uh, weight mixture, right? Weight. So, I can write down x O2 weight is equal to B divided by x plus y plus B plus 3.76 A and uh, B I can write down as A minus x plus y by 2 divided by x plus y plus a minus x minus y by 2 plus 3.76 a. So, this will cancel it out and uh, you will get basically, um, basically you will get is a minus x plus y by 2 divided by a plus y by 2 plus 3.76 a. Now, uh, if we will simplify further, I will get x if I will simplify further, I will get x O 2 weight into a basically that will be 3.76 a plus a that is 4.76 a plus y by 2 is equal to a minus x plus y by 2 in the bracket. Now, if I will simplify further what I will get? I will get basically I can take all this out uh, of uh, this a. Uh, I can take this uh, to the other side that is uh, 4 point 76 a x o 2 weight plus x o 2 y by 2 is equal to a minus x minus y by 2. So, if I simplify this I will get basically uh, I can take a all to the one side I will get a is equal to 4.76 x o 2 weight minus 1 minus x minus y by 2 1 plus x o 2 weight. So, uh, therefore, I can write down a as x plus y by 2 1 plus x o 2 weight divided by 1 minus 4.76 o 2 weight. So, this is my equation 3. Similarly, we can derive uh, a values in terms of x o 2 dry that is basically equal to a is equal to x plus y by 2 1 minus x o 2 dry divided by 1.476 x o 2 dry and this is your 4. Now, by using this uh, equation 1 and 2, we can have basically x i dry is equal to x i weight n mixture 
weight divided by n mixture dry. This is my equation 5. So, uh, let us now uh, simplify it further and express this n mixture of weight in terms of uh, mole fraction of the oxygen and also the A values. Right? From equation 1, we can have n mixture weight is equal to x plus y plus b plus 3.76 a. That is already we know and uh, in this case what we will do in place of uh, basically b I can write down as simply I can write down and uh, x plus y plus a minus x minus y by 2 3.76 a. We have already done that which is nothing but your y by 2 plus 4.76 a. And uh, this is your 6. <coughs> so, uh, what we will do? We will basically uh, substitute the values of a and then get the equation 6 can be uh, express using equation 4 that is n mixture weight is equal to 4.76 I will just put the values of A that is x plus y by 2, 1 plus x O 2 weight divided by 1 minus 4.76 x O 2 weight plus y by 2. Similarly, we can have n mixture dry is equal to 4.76 x plus y by 2 1 minus x O 2 dry 1 minus 4.76 x O 2 dry minus y by 2. This you can say equation 7 and this is 8. And uh, if you look at if I know the values of uh, basically mole fraction of the mixture dry, I can find out the mole fraction of uh, the oxygen dry or vice versa in terms of this. So, uh, as I told earlier that uh, we are now uh, uh, can express the measure concentrated of I s species at a, a particular oxygen level uh, in, uh, and that can be done uh, by using the, the expression uh, equation 5. We can cast that in terms of uh, oxygen level as compared to weight and dry. So, the measured concentration of I s spaces at given oxygen level can be corrected uh, to specific oxygen level as x i m oxygen level is equal to x n oxygen level n i n O 2 level divided by n i m O 2 level. For example, like uh, 
suppose you have measured the mole fraction of CO at let us say 10 percent of the oxygen level. Then you can and to convert that into 15 percent which is a standard for the gas turbine engine. So, therefore, you can use this formula 9 and you can do that. For example, like if you are measuring of CO2 at uh, let us say 10 percent of oxygen and you want to convert that into x CO2 at 15 percent of oxygen level. Therefore, you can really uh, do this using formula uh, equation 9. Beside this, the emission of a combustor or a engine is uh, expressed in terms of emission index. Uh, emission index, uh, if you look at it, is basically uh, the normalized indicator of emission level. Emission index is defined as E i is basically E i of i s spaces is equal to m dot i by m dot f equation 10. And the good thing about this emission index is that it is independent of the oxygen level present in the product gas or the flue gas. So, that is why it is being used uh, for, uh, uh, for combustors or the engine in modern time. And for combustion of hydrocarbon fuels, the E i E of i is expressed as E i x i divided by x c o plus x c o 2 x m w i by m w f. And uh, this is uh, if you look at if I consider that C x h 2 y and this x is basically the mole fraction of carbon x is basically moles of carbon in moles of hydrocarbon fuel of that is represented by C x h 2 y. And this portion is uh, basically number of moles. of i th spaces per mole of carbon present in fuel. And this portion represents basically conversion factor of carbon present in fuel in terms of mass. So, therefore, this is being used very much and keep in mind that unit of E i, this unit is basically uh, the, the emission index is basically unitless. However, it is being expressed in terms of gram per kg that means gram of the uh, emission per unit kg of fuel being consumed. Uh, this is for the convenience it is being used, but however emission index is basically a non-dimensionalized number. So, uh, this is being used profusely for um, expressing the emission in combustor and um, or engines nowadays. Uh, because of fact that it is not having the problem of uh, the oxygen level present in the uh, flue gases whenever you are measuring. 
So, with this we will stop over and in the next lecture we will be discussing about uh, the how to control the emission level. Thank you very much.